some longer sun poems. The sun is my woman, I am her man. The sun is a dull knife. The hand that holds the knife does not shake, it does lack strength. On this day that is so clearly a day, or two days, no more, before death. This is a day with the beauty of certain outrageous old women who have beaten their churches into plowshares. They have made churches of their gardens, and the whole world is their kitchen garden. And they have made churches of their mirrors. They look into their mirrors and laugh loudly at the death that looks back at them. They go out into their gardens and spend the day laughing quietly. They look up at the hand that holds the knife in the sky, and they say, Eat to live! Don't live to eat. These old women, whose beauty is not limited by fecundity, this is such a day. A blurred nude in a hot wind. I've taken a beer from the freezer. I've not yet put my glasses on. I am a blurred nude, watching a hot wind move in the grasses of the wild field outside my broken window. How happy I am to have nothing to do. I open myself to the sun and wait for the people of poetry to gather in the evening and write words for you. The drunken laughter of the sun has set the wind on fire this morning. He danced the stars down, danced them all down. The giggling stars kissed him into morning. There is laughter in his wobbling legs. The wind is a purring cat tripping up his feet with her welcome home. I write words for you and watch the grasses move and think of the drunken sun humming a tipsy tune as he gathers a gift of flowers, caring nothing for their unlovely names, caring only for the ivory madness of his woman. But I am a man of words, learning the names of flowers, the invisible flowers of the wild places of the city, the small and all but invisible flowers that laugh with the sun and the rain in the secret places of children. The controller sat in his control room feeding chains of suggestion to a heavy body sitting in the sun. Suggestion chains that work quietly fumbly, fuddy-duddy amusements, moving into one another and moving away from each other, like slow-rolling pool balls, many-colored and spinning on torn felt and dented slate, against the dead and lumpish cushions of the only pool table of a tiny town on a hot Wyoming afternoon in a dry tavern darkness that seems like cool, but isn't. It's just a nice place to be, doing nothing. A slack-faced son sits at the end of the bar saying nothing trying to look dangerous in his drunkenness. The wind dances through the opening door, wraps me in its arms and lifts me from my feet, babbling ecstatically. It's going to be a great night. The rain will sit in later. I am as full of laughter and battle as anyone. I take my place at the bar and offer to turn arms with the sun. The wind breaks the seal on a fresh deck, and begins shuffling the cards. Jeweler. Evening. 
Highway 395, north of Pasco, November 1986. Item 1. I am what I seem to be. Item 2. What I see is what I get. 1. The inhibited, the limited flap of a low hawk. I am a set of reflexes flying a steel kite in an asphalt wind. The sky is doing its abalone shell best to be an oriental jewel merchant, a pearl merchant displaying his wares on abalone shell. A railroad freight train is a winter slow snake aching its way up the coulee toward Ritzville. The exciting pinprick headlight swimming upstream in the flowing pool of twilight below the highway. Two. Due west now, right into the showcases of the Oriental Pearl Merchant. A cloud of starlings lifts out of electric geometry, folds in upon itself, unfolds, quoting three lines of wind poetry, settles again, reintroducing wildness, reintroducing chaos into the electric crosshatch with which we have regularized the countryside. Again the folding and unfolding group flight. Having quoted a line or two of wind poetry, the starling settled back again to dispute its content. 3. The oriental pearl merchant has closed up shop. A luminous curtain conceals the abalone world in which he deals. Shadows move on the luminous screen. He counts his money, chats with his wife, reliving the business day, reliving the interplay with customers and potential customers. Customers are drawn to his pearl and abalone display by the storyteller's art. But there are days, and there are days. Four. One day a customer will see the promised show and go away with nothing. The doors of experience on that day are swinging doors. They open for the customers and close again behind them. The doors of experience rise up and fall in on themselves on such a day, like the pages of a novel that open and close, turning quickly through the fingers of readers trying to find out what, or readers reminding themselves what happened, until the readers find out what happened, or are reminded of what happened, close the novel, press its covers firmly together, rise from their reading chairs and return it immediately to the vacant spot on the bookshelf so that it will not be an issue of further concern to them. 5. But there are other days, good days. On such days... A part of each customer that enters will be left in the jewelry shop. A part of the jewelry shop will go with the customers wherever they go. On good days, the doors of experience open and do not close. The doors of experience, like poems, open the doors of memory, like songs learned in childhood that sing themselves through life. On such a day, one owns and is owned by one's experience. Conversation The sun was squatting on his haunches in my backyard, 
sucking the juice from a stalk of grass. The wind sprawled beside him, rubbing its hand over the dry weeds, listening to them crackle. I rose from the joyless pages of the cast-iron Bible in which I had most recently invested my faith and walked out to join my old friends in a circle of casual lies. A scowl that could not quite be hidden from his friend darkened the eyes of the sun as he inquired politely after my wives and children. And the wind was not the untroubled summer gust I had become accustomed to. Having attributed some small adventure to each of the women and children, an unwanted silence fell over me as I awaited the solemn assault on my reason that I had come outdoors to escape. Friend man, said the son, what is it like to die? What is it like to die, I thought. All I could say was, I know nothing more of that than you do. I have not died. I am as nearly immortal as you are. The sun was unsatisfied. But men around you die every day and pass away into the earth and the water and the air. And there is no one who has lived that has not died. I shook my head. And I know nothing of their passage. They have gone away and have not returned to tell me of the far countries they have visited. I do not expect to go, but I will go. And you will also, though not so soon as I. The wind flicked the dust with his forefinger, and a dust devil whirled in the field for our amusement. The sun watched her dance and hummed in merriment at the happy thought that he might die. He sang and invented paradises where we might meet and he could shake my hand. Friend man, said the wind, I have never made a mistake or committed a crime. Why is it so important to people that they do these things? I laughed. Are you not called cyclone and hurricane, typhoon and tornado? The wind was offended. I am nothing but the arms and legs of the sun. I am less. I am little more than a wrinkled shadow spreading from his footprints as he wanders the earth. I tried to explain. In every living thing there is a glow as magical as the light of the sun, and from this glow man stretches a wrinkled shadow forth more mysterious than the wind. But there are rends and tatters in the shadow called accident and mistake, crime and wrongdoing, and never are all of them knitted together by the bright threads of love or covered over by laughter's motley patches. These proud rags of his dignity are the symbol of his right to be wrong, the sign of his ultimate loneliness. For man is not so powerful as the sun, nor is he as pure as the wind. The wind ruffled the feathers of some roosting birds. They swore at him and rose into the air, soaring for our delight. Man is a fool, friend man, said the wind. I am a fool, wind, sun. And so saying, I returned to my kitchen to attempt once again to press the wrinkles of my shadow into orderly creases between the pages of yet another book that called itself the truth. <laughs>